Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains in Missouri, USA. Today, we have laid out here a Commodore 1541 floppy disk drive. This is the one with the Neutronics drive. I told a friend that I would dig through my stash of old drives for a friend of his to see if I could find a good Neutronics head. Uh, these are notorious for going bad. And I pulled one out and I tested it and I thought, well, you know, I, I kind of want to test a couple more to make sure that I, I do have a good head. And I pulled out a couple more and in this bunch of three was this one and it was in really good shape. The case was just a little dirty. There's one little break on the bottom in the venting, but it's not a big deal. You can hardly see it. Um, the inside is nearly spotless. There's a little bit of dust on the circuit board, but that's it. And it had a note on top. Uh, this is one I bought from a guy. He had a bunch of them that he'd never got around to repairing, but he put notes on them as to what was wrong. And this just said that he couldn't put a disc in and the lever seemed to broke. So as I was measuring the, the resistance of the head and comparing that to the other two drives, I looked down here and I saw what was wrong with it and I accidentally figured it out. So I thought, well, since I accidentally figured out what was wrong with it, we might as well go ahead and accidentally refurbish it. So that's what this video is about. Now, first, I'll show you what the problem was and describe how we're going to fix that, and then we'll go through the refurb process. Let's jump right in. When I first looked at this, I noticed that this bracket was bent over against this arm, and I thought, well, that might be binding that arm, so I straightened it up, but it still wasn't doing anything. And I noticed this pin was sticking way out here, and it wasn't actually contacting this arm. So I thought, well, maybe that pin worked itself out. So then I pushed it in like that, and lo and behold, it now works. So what I will do on this is pull this pin back out, and I'll put a drop of Loctite on there and slide that back into the right position, let that cure, and it should be right as rain. I'm using Loctite because it cures when there's no oxygen present. This is such a tight fit here. When I put a lid on there and slide it in there, there won't be any oxygen around there and it'll cure nice and hard and that pin should stay in there forever. So now what we'll do uh, before we worry about Loctiting that pin in place is we'll clean the drive head and lubricate these rails down here and we'll plug the circuit board back onto this guy and we'll check the drive speed and then we'll test it out with the 1541 diagnostic cartridge. Okay I've got my little bottle of alcohol here and a q-dip. We will get a little alcohol on the q-tip. And we will clean that head. And this looks nearly spotless. I don't see a thing on it. Yeah, there's really nothing coming off of there. Okay. And the rails in here, I'll see if I can get you a close-up on the rails, also look really good. So I'm going to use the other end of the Q-tip with some white oil. Never spray anything into the drive. You're going to get it all over. Just put a few drops of oil on the Q-tip, rub it on the rails, and you'll be good to go. You can just... Rotate this wheel over here very carefully by hand so you can get all the different parts of the rail. So we're just lightly lubricating it and the other thing that we're doing at the same time is cleaning any dust off of it. There we go. Okay, that's done. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clean up this bezel a little bit. The rest of this inside is really nice and clean. I'm so surprised. And um, then I'll get set up to check the drive speed, and I'll show you how that works. Oh, you know what? First, I got this out of order. Um, I'll clean up the bezel. We'll have to get the circuit board popped back on here. Then we can check out the drive speed. I got the front bevel cleaned up, and that's just part of the goo that came off of there. How gross. I think this might have been in a smoking environment at one time. I wanted to point out 
that I made marks on all the connectors before I unplug them so I know how they plug back in. So I know that one goes like that. And that one goes like that. Even if they look polarized and you think you'll never forget how they go. It never hurts to mark them. Computer from accidentally blowing stuff up. Let's just get kind of stuffed under there like that. And there's the power connection, which I also marked here goes like that. So now we've got this set up and I need to get a computer over here and get that hooked up. It'll actually flip this thing. Oh hey that's unfortunate. This is missing the disk on the bottom to offset the drive speed. I have to see if I can print one of those out. We're on my handheld shaky cam. I've got everything set up to do our speed test here. And full disclosure, if you watched me very carefully plug in all these connectors, as I was saying, put stripes in there so you don't plug them in the wrong spot. Uh, this was a case of do as I say, don't do as I do. I actually had this one plugged in here. Uh, this plug here is for the drive LED, so luckily it didn't mess anything up in this point. This one is to the spindle motor control. So with this not plugged in, the spindle motor does not turn on when you turn the drive on. What you should get when you turn the drive on with this type of drive mechanism is like that. Using the easy flash here with the diagnostic set of tools that I compiled that I had in a couple of videos ago. Using the world of Janney's 1541 diagnostic program there. Okay, and if you look down toward the bottom of the list, you'll see S speed check. That's what we're going to use. Okay, we've got our drive here. And again, this is the Neutronics or a Mitsumi mechanism. And there is a little circuit board right here, which controls the spindle motor. And there is a potentiometer right here. It's the only potentiometer on the board that controls the speed. Right here I have an old-fashioned fluorescent lamp. You can't use a compact fluorescent or an LED. It's got to be an old-fashioned fluorescent lamp or maybe a neon bulb. This flickers at your main frequency. So here in the US that's 60 Hertz. Uh, for those of you in Europe and other places abroad that'll be 50 Hertz. I'm going to tip this up on its side. I found the tachometer disc on Ray Carlson's site and I printed that out and I just stuck it there with some thin double-sided tape. The outside ring is for 60 hertz, the inside ring is for 50 hertz. This is going to be tough for you to see uh, because the camera might be uh, filming at a different frame rate than the 60 hertz here. But what happens when this is at the right speed, this outside ring, if you concentrate on one of these marks, it'll look like it's standing still, even though it's spinning. So I'll turn on the fluorescent lamp here. Oh, that's kind of a funky picture, isn't it? And I'm going to put a disc in the disc drive. Okay, hopefully I can keep this steady enough you can see it. And I am going to select the speed test. And it will ask me to press return. And that's just the head doing the head check. Well, on the LCD on the camera, it looks fairly okay. You can see that outside ring looks pretty stationary. I'm going to hold that up as a reference check. And it looks like it might be proceeding slightly this direction. Now on the screen, it says it's dead on 300 RPM, but... Yeah, that seems a little worse. Okay. So it looks like the reading on the screen in this particular case is okay. Um, I seem to recall that that might work differently on different drives, but 
and this sticker here. Always does it. I'm going to go ahead and peel this one off because that'll fly off there eventually. Okay, now we know the speed is correct and I've got a new blank disk in here. I am going to do a fast format name. We'll just call this test ID 01. If we're able to do a format, that's a good sign that the uh, erase and read write heads are okay. All right. So now I'll try formatting this a second time with a different name because it should go through and erase, I believe. Okay, now that we have the speed test done, we will use a factory produced disc to do a quick alignment check. Uh, a real alignment disc uh, has patterns written on it in a way that a normal disc drive can't do. And, uh, you know, those aren't made anymore. And if you have one, you know, keep it in a safe. Uh, you can't use a disc that you make, you can't use a disc that your friend made, and you can't use a disc that some guy on eBay says he got permission to reproduce. It just isn't going to work. A uh, factory disc, those were produced on better quality machines that were kept aligned. And we will pop it in the drive here, and we'll hit A for alignment check. And we'll just do a single pass. The first two columns are the track it's trying to read, and then the track it actually read, so those two should match. The third column is how well it's doing reading on the actual track. That should always be 100, or darn close to 100. And the fourth column is how far off it is on doing a good half track read. Uh, that's never going to, it should be zero ideally, it's never going to be zero. Um, you know, because you've got the tolerance of how the drive is aligned, how this disc was made. Uh, those aren't, you know, plus or minus 100, so I think this is probably going to be okay. Okay, I'd say that's pretty good. Uh, we've got a, a good working drive mechanism now, I think. Um, let's go ahead and try to load a game or something on here and see how that works. Okay, I've got my original Jumpman backup copy from when I was a kid. And as of a month or so ago, this disc still works. I probably should now. So we will do a directory. Yep, okay. Load the first thing on the disk. I need a joystick. It's working. Oh, I haven't played it this slow in a long time.
Let's let it let one more. <laughs> Let's let it load one more level if I can speak. And then we'll continue fixing. I nearly panicked because I couldn't find my Loctite. So, what I'm going to do is get a tiny bit of Loctite. Okay, I've got just a teeny tiny bit on the screwdriver here. And I'll pop some on that shaft like that. Now that I got everything positioned, I think. too far. There we go. You just want that pin sticking in as far as that nylon sheet that's in there. There we go. I'll let that lock tight set up and it will be good. Now let's move on to our bodywork. There was just a couple teeny tiny issues with this case. One of them is this corner right here. If I can get it where you can see it. There is a slight crack starting right there, which we'll take care of. And again, I've got to get this around to where I can see it again. Right here. See that one's cracked right there. So those are two things we'll need to fix. Okay, it's a new day, new shirt. I have a syringe here filled with a tiny bit of acetone. This makes a very easy applicator. This has a blunt tip. I won't poke myself, hopefully. The general idea here is I am going to hold this like this. The crack is in this corner. Put a drop of acetone in there and then pull the corner in and out like that to work the acetone into the crack. And the only tough part here is we want to make sure we only get one little drop in here. Or maybe two little drops. Well, that's really soaking down into the crack, so the crack must be a little longer than it appears. Okay, so now I am going to hold this like this for a minute or so. Give that acetone time to soften the ABS plastic. And then when the acetone evaporates, it will be glued together, nice and solid. Cue the Jeopardy music. Do 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 do. I know, that was the highlight of your day. I found I could squeeze like this, and that was a lot easier to hold that together. And it's been a minute or so, and you might be able to see just a little bit of stuff that squirt it out of the crack right there after the plastic is softened sometimes you just get a little bit of stuff that squirts out of the crack you can scrape that with your nail and most of the time that'll disappear now we'll set this to the side and we'll do the other case okay we'll try doing this one close up on camera trick here is to get the syringe in here and get just a drop or two of acetone oh, that was a little too much Okay, he didn't run out on the 
other side, which is okay. So now we will hold this like this for about a minute. It's very exciting. Okay, our minute is up. The biggest danger here is getting too much acetone on and having it leak out to the outside of the case or it can cause blooming. But right here's where our break was and you can't tell it was fixed from the outside. And you can't tell that much from the inside either. So we'll give this another little while to set up and then I'll take the acetone, what's left in the syringe, and put it back in the bottle. Well, what do you say we go ahead and put this drive back together? Can I sneak the mechanism back in the bottom half. Get it approximately lined up. Of course I dropped the screw. Those are such a pain. How about we do it this way? Huh. Remember, we want to take the screwdriver counterclockwise first. So we feel the screw to drop down in the hole and then clockwise. There we go. We do that so we're not cutting new threads into the plastic. Counterclockwise or if you're British or speak British influenced English, anti-clockwise. Realize not everyone can speak the correct American English. screws and then go back and tighten them up all the way. That lets everything seat into place properly. up this LED wire the whole time. That is the correct place for that wire. Okay, it just kind of pops into a couple indentations on that side. is a little scuff right there.
All right, we've got the cover back on the drive. I've got the computer hooked back up. We'll try loading Jumpman again. Just to double check and make sure everything is still working fine. Oh, cut that too close. Well, we've got a working 1541 now. It was kind of an accidental find on my stash of stuff, but it's in very good shape. So I will put a note on the bottom of it as to the work I did to it and the date and put that on the shelf of good stuff. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of our accidental 1541 refurbish. While I didn't set out to uh, fix or refurbish this 1541, the problem was so simple I just couldn't help myself. And then, you know, to clean it up and everything, it wasn't that much more work. I'd like to take a moment to say thanks to those who support the Haybert channel through Patreon and other methods. I really appreciate it. If you'd also like to help support the Haybert channel, take a look down below and you'll find our Patreon and subscribe star links. If you're a subscriber, thanks. I really appreciate it. You know, it helps out a lot and helps other people find the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, what the heck are you waiting on? Now, if you look down below, you'll see a rectangular button that says subscribe on it. Click on that guy and YouTube will subscribe you to this channel. Then if you click on that little bell-shaped icon, YouTube will be nice enough to let you know just as soon as I post a new video. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments section down below. I would love to hear from you. Well, until next time, bye. Oh, does anybody need a 1541 drive? I happen to have a good one that was just refurbished.